Well, thank you for that introduction. Mark, Mark Gertler is here. Mark, did you bring Jordy? We could bring out the violins, but I don't, I don't see Jordy. We'll get him here by lunch. Well, good morning and welcome to day two of the Federal Reserve System Conference on Monetary Policy Strategy, Tools, and Communication Practices. I think you will have to agree that the presentations and discussions yesterday were uniformly thoughtful, substantive, and stimulating. And today we will have another impressive lineup of speakers and panelists addressing timely topics that are relevant to our review. And let me behave, be, let me convey on behalf of Chair Powell, the Board of Governors, and the Reserve Bank Presidents a sincere and deep appreciation to all of the participants on this program, especially the authors of the seven outstanding papers for the time, thought, and energy that went into preparing their contributions. Yesterday, Professors Everly Stock and Wright provided us with a thorough and thoughtful evaluation of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy strategy, tools, and communications since 2009. They conclude that the policy tools that the FOMC relied on, what they call level and slope policy, helped to restore the U.S. economy to health and bring it close to the goals of maximum employment and price stability. As was noted several times yesterday, in recent years, forecasters and policymakers have been surprised by the decline in the unemployment rate and the, and the size of the sustained ongoing gains in payroll employment. FOMC participants' estimates of the longer-run normal rate of unemployment in the SEP illustrate this point. They have drifted lower over time as labor market conditions have improved and inflation has remained quiescent. The paper by Professors Abraham and Haltewanger provided us with an innovative search and matching model to estimate labor market slack, which complements, of course, the standard estimates based on unemployment gaps and Phillips curve relationships. On that same general topic, the panel discussion of national and community leaders ably moderated by Governor Brainerd provided us with a very valuable perspective on the labor market that could not otherwise be gleaned from the aggregate data that we often consult. Of course, notwithstanding what is taught in many macroeconomic courses, the United States is not a closed economy, but is one of many nations engaged in global finance and economic commerce. Professor Obstfeld's paper examined the ways the global economic integration affects inflation and the neutral rate of interest, or R-star, and the role played by the U.S. dollar in transmitting the Fed's monetary policy to other countries. In our final session yesterday, Professors Cicchetti and Schoenholz assessed the Fed's communications practices. Based on interviews and conversations with market participants, academics, and former policymakers, Professors Cicchetti and Schoenholz offered concrete suggestions for improving our most important communication vehicles. Our program today will feature papers by Lars Svensson on alternative monetary policy strategies, by Eric Sims and Cynthia Wu on the policy toolkit, and by Neil Kashyap and Casper Siegert on the interplay between financial stability and monetary policy. Our featured panel of national and community leaders moderated by President Rosengren will, I'm sure, offer valuable perspective on how the monetary policy levers that we pull and push affect communities, credit availability, and small business. Now, aside from being intellectually stimulating for two days, how does this week's conference fit into the FOMC's review of its monetary policy strategy, tools, and communications? Let me describe briefly how the review is structured. Over the past several months, the individual reserve banks have been hosting a series of Fed Listens events, seven so far, including this conference, with at least five more to follow in coming months. Each event is organized with a format and list of participants that works best for that district, but with two common elements. First, that Fed officials do most of the listening, and second, that when feasible, the events be live streamed, as this one is today. In Dallas, we heard from local leaders about the challenges facing lower income communities. In Minneapolis, we listened to researchers discuss the distributional consequences of the business cycle and monetary policy. In Boston, we heard from small business labor leaders and groups that work in underserved communities about the effects of the Fed's policy on New England residents. In Camden, New Jersey, we learned about the workforce training initiatives of a local 
manufacturing firm. And I got a hard hat to go with it at that trip. Very, very nice. Thank you, Pat. In Richmond, a panel of local business and community leaders discussed the ways that the Fed's monetary policy affects the regional economy. And in New York, recently, panelists representing labor, local government, and community organizations offered their perspectives on the relative importance of the Fed's dual mandate goals. As I and my Fed colleagues who have participated in these events will attest, they have provided us with valuable perspectives on the economy that we could not glean otherwise. Now, in coming regularly scheduled meetings of the FOMC, the committee will undertake its own assessment of our policy strategy tools and communications practices. This assessment will be informed by what we've heard at this conference, I can assure you, by our listening sessions in the districts, and by the work of the system staff in briefing the committee. Now, as I've learned in my eight or nine months on the board, when the committee tackles important issues, we tend to take our time for wide-ranging and candid discussions. And so I expect our deliberations will continue over several meetings for the remainder of this year. And we will share our findings with the public when we have completed our review, likely during the first half of next year. So thank you very much, and let's move directly into our first session. Thank you.